This video is intended for subscribers and viewers with some training in the field of magnetics. Some clarifying material is available through Syncopetra at gmail.com. It is a successful demonstration of what we predicted in our last video, with the exception that torque was predicted in the wrong direction. The slow frame rate of YouTube can't keep up with the quick movement of the devices, but we are now producing torque that can be easily felt and measured. Summarizing, this is only the second time I have produced asynchronous torque. It is the first time, after hundreds or maybe thousands of tries, that I have produced torque with an asynchronous rotor. Conceptually, an asynchronous rotor takes advantage of the benefits in so-called homopolar theories. The first torque was produced with a partial asynchronous homopolar stator rather than a rotor. A full rotor produced no torque, so this may truly be my first success. First we have a partial stratified rotor with 1.3 millimeter spaces between the elements. Approximately 120 degrees of the rotor are populated. Asynchronicity is achieved with the along the arc with at least three strata engaging with stator poles. Cogging forces at the end of the arc se segment are substantial. Within the bounds of the arc the rotor produces no torque and remains at whatever position it is placed. But the cogging forces are substantial. On the other side of this rotor we can demonstrate the threaded cogging. Without meeting asynchronous requirements a rotor cogs to synchronous points. Few people will understand that the largest quantum leap in this quest was getting past the cogging problems. The prior rotor was expected to produce torque without cogging. It might be considered a 50% success because it successfully overcame togging, but it failed to produce torque. My hindsight assessment is that 90 or 95 or maybe 90% 99% success is more accurate. Anyone working in these experimental trenches knows that cogging and vacuum cleaners do the same thing. They both This rotor does not meet asynchronous requirements, so it cogs. The cogging torques are estimated to be 5 to 100 times greater than any useful torque that can be produced, so cogging may be the biggest obstacle. The needle in the haystack metaphor applies here. Our non-cogging discovery might be a metaphorical solution of burning the hay, thereby solving about 95% of the problem. The first rotor was modified. A permeability change required increasing the strata spacing by 2.2 millimeters. Not a large change, but it meant that the rotor had to be assembled by hand rather than by using a fixture. Problems were complicated by a Hong Kong typhoon and magnets that came in with only 300 gauss instead of the 2000 gauss promised. So now we have torque where we had none before. The rotor is propelled counterclockwise with more than 0.25 newton meters of torque. The rotor is always propelled to the counterclockwise boundary where the overwhelming cogging forces kick in at a quarter, a half, three quarters in full clockwise starting position. The rotor is propelled counterclockwise to the end of the populated rotor arc. The rotor is a 360 gram eccentric mass at 7.2 centimeter radius. The torque is more than adequate to overcome the overhung load when the motor is stood on end. Burning the hay was a good idea. The torque that was produced in the, is in the opposite direction than was predicted, which means that our original torque theory was wrong. Another theory crashed and burned. However, sifting through the combined ashes of the failure and the success, we discovered two logi logical requirements for a magnet motor. We should not be expected to fully reveal the discoveries. 
but I will give some clues that I hope are tintillating. Here are the two stratified asynchronous rotors side by side. The only difference is that the permeability in the rotor that produces torque is greater than the permeability of the rotor that produces none. Permeability is one of the discovered puzzle pieces. You may have already seen the proof. The two stator poles are colored red and blue to indicate their polarity. This is not a red herring and negates the possibility that the torque is produced by the attraction or repulsion between rotor and stator magnets. The torque is essentially unchanged with the poles reversed. I have long been intrigued by two magnetic enigmas. The first is the true mechanics of a typical asynchronous motor. How and on what are the forces applied? The second enigma is the attraction between two magnets with different flux densities and areas inversely proportional to the flux density ratio. Force on the magnet with greater flux density should be greater than force on the magnet with greater area. The second riddle of unequal reaction forces is yet unsolved. The second puzzle piece found in the ashes of the hay is related to the second riddle. I cannot explain the unequal force enigma, but no torque is produced without the effect, and the associated energy implications seem to be very, very important. The second piece meshes very nicely with critical angle puzzle piece and another critical parameter puzzle piece previously discovered. Our two discoveries from the ashes are both clearly out of the box. Permeability is greater than the permeability of free space, and both discoveries involve working in magnetic regions that are easily extrapolated from published data. The requirement to extrapolate probably means we are exploring new territory once thought to be useless. A prime example. The SI unit for flux is the Weber. The CGS system doesn't have a name for an equivalent unit, probably because the unit is relatively useless. Unequal magnets have utility with a 100% flux linkage, i.e. equal Webers. Functional magnet plots are typically field strength versus flux density, i.e. H versus B. In the realm of unequal magnets, functional plots need to be expanded and changed to field strength versus total flux, i.e. Weber's. So what's next? We need to make a 360 degree rotor and fully populate the stator to accomplish the task of producing a magnet motor. It is tough working on these mundane tasks when the new technology seems to open so many doors. The demonstration effectively utilizes a mere 2% flux density difference and a considerable deviation from the critical parameter. The possibilities with 50% flux density difference in combination with full critical parameter compliance are somewhat mind-boggling. The next video should be less technical and more interesting so it will appeal to a bigger crowd.